Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines running. Commit. Liftoff. We have liftoff at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. My name is Gary Files and I'm the director of the Keeldra Observatory in Northumberland, the United Kingdom. And I've came here to sunny California, to Pasadena, for Space Fest 2014. And the reason I've came here is because some of the most important people in the history of space exploration have gathered here, including men who walked on the moon. Born in 1929, Jim McDivitt is a former American test pilot, United States Air Force pilot, aeronautical engineer and NASA astronaut who flew in the Gemini and Apollo programs. He commanded the Gemini 4 flight during which Edward H. White performed the first US spacewalk and later the Apollo 9 flight which was the first manned flight test of the lunar module and the complete set of Apollo flight hardware. He later became manager of lunar landing operations and was the Apollo spacecraft program manager from 1969 to 1972. My name is Jim McDivitt. Uh, I worked for NASA for 10 years. I flew on the Gemini 4 program, uh, first uh, EVA, four day flight. And I flew uh, Apollo 9, uh, 10 days. First flight of the lunar module, and then I ran the Apollo spacecraft program for 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's an, that's a, it's an, it's an incredible history that you have there. Um, part of the work that we do back in the UK is obviously about inspiring the next generation of scientists. To you, Jim, what was the most important part of the Apollo program? <laughs> well, for me personally, it was getting back on the aircraft carrier. <laughs> It's, you know, then you know it's over. Um, I think I don't think you can pick out any one thing. You know, that the program had a, a, a plan. Uh, each flight is planned ahead of time, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and leading up to the lunar landing. And then from there on, it was an exploration program. A, a number 11 was really to fulfill the president's promise, land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. They did some science, don't misunderstand me, but that was the object of what the president said. From then on, it was a lunar exploration program, and we had uh, devices we put on the moon, a lot of exp uh, geology that was conducted. Later on, we put the rover on. They could run around with that. Uh, we went from just a couple hours on the moon took quite a long time, you know, a matter of days. Um, and so the whole program just sort of fit together like this, and uh, we finally got everything done. Yeah, you you absolute, absolutely did. I guess one of the most iconic missions was, of course, was Apollo 13. Now, were you directly involved with any of that, Jim? Yeah, I was the program manager at that time. I happened to be down in the Mission Control Center <clears throat> uh, we had a new TV camera on the board, and I went down that night to see how the TV camera worked. And um, I, that was just before the thing blew up, so I was still in my, at my console and stuff. Very exciting, very difficult. Probably the best mission we ever flew, flew from a matter of teamwork, people working together. Everybody got the, the object, you know, get them back alive. Yeah, it worked out fine. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've taken from speaking to people about Apollo 13 was that it was an incredible team effort. It was more about, all right, it's all right to fail, but on this mission, failure just wasn't an option, right? <laughs> no, failure never is, a mission, is an option. But you know, what is failure? Uh, is it failure to not get them home or not do them? It's, it's a matter of how you look at it. Uh, 
But, you know, we had problems on all the flights. And that was, that flight probably had fewer anomalies than any of the other ones, but it had the biggest failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jim, that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming by.